Recent cyber attacks in the maritime industry and in other business sectors such as banking, finance and insurance sectors, public administration and airline industry have revealed that a successful cyber attack might result in substantial impact in providing services and compromise on safety of organizations' assets. According to Marsh, a global leader in insurance broking and risk management solutions, the majority of cyber attacks in the recent years were driven by an attempt to obtain personal or financially sensitive data. However, the main targets of cyber attacks in the maritime business include denial of service, fraudulent movement of cargo, hold the organizations for ransom on stolen data, gathering intelligence on precise location of the cargo, financial gain, or just gaining knowledge about critical information. Nowadays, companies across all business sectors have begun to experience highly sophisticated and complex cyber attacks that attempt to inflict damage to property and operations by seeking to take control of industrial systems. Highly skilled hackers have demonstrated the ability to penetrate the systems used by the maritime industry with potentially disastrous consequences. Vessel navigation and propulsion systems, cargo handling and container tracking systems at ports and onboard ships, and shipyard inventories and automated processes are all controlled using software that is fundamental to smooth running operations. A cyber attack that disrupted the navigation of a ship will result in enormous media coverage and could, in the worst circumstances, lead to horrific loss of life and significant property damage. As the maritime industry embraces digitization and the efficiencies and cost savings that come with it, security can often be taken for granted. Unfortunately, as those systems evolve, so do attackers. Their methods become more advanced and the paydays bigger. BIMCO has noted a number of incidents where malicious software was introduced to ship systems by accident, often by third parties contracted to check or even update specific bridge equipment, but crew introduction remains the more obvious route. As cyber risks on the water remain a concern, the ongoing real threat is and will always be found at a company's head office. How a company deals with that will decide what an attacker does next. Outside the realm of hacktivism, criminals are looking for a payday, and that means they are going to be looking for any vulnerability which can give them access to the company finances. There have been reports of highly specific and convincing email fraud attempts against shipping companies, ports and ship brokers. In several instances, the hackers have infiltrated the company's systems and then sat dormant, often for months, waiting for their opening. In one case, this involved sending spoofed emails to a client and redirecting payments of hundreds of thousands of dollars to the hacker's bank accounts. Fortunately, Thanks to quick thinking staff, the fraud was discovered and the banks and police were able to stop the transfers, but this isn't always the case. The Shen Attack The Shen Attack is an hypothetical scenario created by the University of Cambridge Center of Risk Studies of a catastrophic cyber event targeting the maritime industry. The hypothetical Shen virus gets its name from a shape-shifting sea monster from the Chinese mythology. The report of the event is called the Shen Attack, Cyber Risk in Asia-Pacific Ports, and presents a scenario on what could happen if a virus attacked a number of ports in the region, from an insurer's perspective, and how the port's operations will be affected. But Let's look at how everything will start and the effects of such an attack in the maritime industry and the economy. The virus originates in a ship management company's cargo software, corrupting the manifests of all ships it manages. The virus then travels through the port management system supply chain to disrupt the first port of call of each infected ship. Once the corrupt manifests are open at destination ports, the virus spreads through the port's cargo management network. It works its way through the entire shipping supply chain, with even third parties experiencing not on effects. Shen Attack estimates that losses of up to $110 billion will occur 
in an extreme scenario in which a computer virus infects 15 parts. Transportation, aviation and aerospace sectors will be the most affected, with $28 billion total economic losses, followed by manufacturing and retail sectors with losses of $42 billion together. Now, let's have a look at the real cases. NotPetya, the Maersk case. In June 2017, the NotPetya ransomware hit companies in the US and throughout Europe. One of those hardest hit was Maersk, which moves about one-fifth the world's freight. Operations at Maersk terminals in four different countries were impacted, causing delays and disruption that lasted weeks. After the dust finally settled, Merz revealed that the financial impact of NotPedia attack landed somewhere in the $200 to $300 million range. Even at the $3 million mark, things could have been much worse for Merz. The company said that no data breach or data loss took place, an event which could have been devastating given the secretive nature of the shipping industry. Good news for Maersk, given that some experts believe that NotPedia was actually intended to be a data wiping weapon and not a traditional ransomware. Costco Shipping In July 2018, Costco, the biggest Chinese container shipping line, confirmed that it was hit by a cyber attack, impacting its internet connection within its offices in America. As such, Local email and network telephone were not working properly and the company decided to shut down the connections with other regions for further investigation. The incident was described as a ransomware attack, their communication system halted and their ability to communicate with vessels, terminals, customers and vendors was disrupted. They implemented a series of emergency measures to continue operations at a slower pace. On one hand, Costco's US offices were struggling with communications issues, but Costco's overseas operations continued as normal with no issues. It was clear that the cyber attack was aimed at only affecting Costco's US offices, inbound and outbound communication in Costco's US. Offices had to manage via phone, hard copy transmissions and emergency email. Although the attack on Costco did not appear to have the same degree of impact as the Notpedia in Maersk's case, this kind of attack could have been spread through the entire fleet and its consequences could have been devastating and certainly costly, especially in terms of insurance. Port of Antwerp Drug traffickers performed a multi-stage cyber attack over a two-year period at the port of Antwerp, a major international port ranking 14th in the 20 largest container ports in the world. Starting by emailing malicious software to staff at the port in June 2011, a criminal group gained access to data remotely, which they then used to identify and intercept containers with drugs smuggled on board. The compromise was discovered after entire containers disappeared from the port with no apparent explanation. The gang drove the containers from the port, retracted the drugs and covered their tracks. The criminal activity continued for a two-year period, until it was stopped by joint action by Belgium and Dutch police. This attack played out somewhat like an advanced persistent threat. They were apparently active for around two years and were able to make use of advanced techniques with seemingly professional execution. MSC April 10, 2020 The Swiss-based container shipping major Mediterranean Shipping Company was targeted by what was suspected to be a cyber attack. The company informed on its social media accounts that its website msc.com and my MSC were not available amid a network outage on one of the company's data centers in Geneva. As a result of the outage, self-service tools for making and managing bookings on MSC ships ceased to be operational. Alternative booking platforms were available, and customers could still book via email and over the phone. In a message post on Twitter, on April 10, MSC said, 
At this point in time, we cannot rule out entirely the possibility of malware, but we can confirm that our agency's worldwide network is working and that our local agents support customers for all services as usual. Following the incident, the container shipping company closed down its servers at the headquarters in the Swiss city of Geneva. MSC said that the incident had only affected internal data processes and that the servers had been closed for security reasons. In a tweet shared on April 12, MSC appeared confident that the fix was just around the corner, writing, significant progress has been made to solve the network outage, and we are confident the issue will be solved shortly. We will continue to issue regular updates. On April 15, MSC published a statement explaining the incident. After a thorough investigation, we confirmed that it was confined to a limited number of physical computer systems in Geneva only, and we determined that it was a malware attack based on an engineer targeted vulnerability. Although the company didn't go deep into details about the cyber attack, and there is no information available regarding the real scope of the damage and its associated costs, Cybersecurity experts believe that the attack was a ransomware. At present, there are no firm figures for maritime cybersecurity incidents. Shipping companies are, in general, reluctant to admit such an attack for commercial reasons. Anonymous reporting will certainly make that easier. However, speed is key. It's crucial that a company under attack shares the information in order to allow others in the sector to bolster their own defenses. In this case, sharing is definitely caring. Cybersecurity specialists are teaming up with maritime companies to create organizations that would help maritime players to prevent and respond to cyber attacks. A good example is the International Maritime Cyber Center of Excellence, IMCCE, The IMCCE consists of the Templar Cyber Academy for Maritime and a Maritime Cyber Emergency Response Team. Through its Cyber Academy, this team offers training for companies operating in the maritime domain, from the executive level and administrative staff to crew and port officials, while the Emergency Response Team with its 24-7 Operations Center is intended to share information and new attack vectors and as many incidents as possible. But what happens when such an attack cannot be prevented? Here is where the insurers come on board. The insurance gap. The Institute Cyber Attack Exclusion Clause, or a variant of that clause, has appeared on marine policies for the past 10 years, excluding any loss damage or liability caused either directly or indirectly by the use of a computer and its associated systems and software as a means of inflicting harm. While there appears to be no suggestion from the industry that this clause will be withdrawn anytime soon, there are now a small number of major insurers that are prepared to consider offering significant underwriting capacity to cover the risks that have been excluded since 2003. Insurers claim that the setup rate for the insurance premium will never work out to them in a business perspective. Cyber risks present a range of issues for insurers because these types of damages are relatively new. Claims data relating to these risks is quite limited. Another difficulty is that cybersecurity is not yet well established in the maritime industry. The complexity of the information technology, operational technology and internet available across the industry also presents a challenge, as does the potential for cyber problems to spread quickly across the globe. As a result, the likelihood, extent and costs associated with claims involving cyber risks are difficult to calculate and potentially significant, hence the reluctance from insurers to offer cover. It is in an owner's interest to scrutinize their various policies in order to identify potential gaps in their insurance cover. It is possible to close the gaps by working with insurers and brokers. This may require owners to demonstrate that they have robust cyber risk management practices in place both ashore and afloat. 
an additional premium may be payable, yet the market is responding slowly to these risks. For insurers and insurance brokers, cyber is big business. Scared by attacks such as a possible share event or Notpedia, companies are looking for guidance on how to avoid being attacked and insurance to cover the costs that arise if they are. According to the Financial Times, analysts at the investment bank Jefferies stated that the global cyber insurance market will grow from 3 billion of premiums last year to 7 billion next year. Finding enough qualified, experienced people to service that demand is proving hard. Unlike more established areas of insurance, there is no big pool of talent readily available. The combination of aging shipping infrastructure and complex supply chains makes the shipping industry vulnerable to attack and consequentially huge losses. The computerized systems that the maritime sector now relies upon were designed to meet the needs of the 20th century, but are not equipped to meet the threats of the 21st century. While the Shen attack is not a definitive forecast, it does highlight the need for vigilance in an industry that could be brought to its knees by a cyber event originating in Asia and spreading to Europe, America and the rest of the world. As the shipping industry begins to look seriously at the prospect of autonomous vessels, these same problems persist and insurance underwriters are already taking note. It will be interesting to see how the industry adapts to the challenges posed. The IMO will certainly be watching, as will the cyber criminals.